What's up gamers, I've never done this before, but I guess I should plug things at the beginning of the video now. I made a Discord server after the last video, link down below. Also, if you truly like my content, engage by subscribing so that the algorithm feasts on your data points. Anyway, for a while now, futurists and technology enthusiasts have championed online education as a way of the future. Isn't it so tantalizing your own digital Aristotle? Say what you will about our current execution of this ideal, but isn't it truly universally enticing, the idea of learning completely at your own pace? You may object and say you appreciate the days you get to do nothing while the other half of the class goes over what you already know, but what if you could knock out your assignments for the week in just a Monday? What if you could knock out your assignments for the month in just a week? What if you could, I don't know, get the year out of the way in just a few months? Or better yet, some of you brilliant students might have noticed a pattern. Online learning would ideally reward continuous, diligent work in the youth, fostering a culture of academic advancement and relentless toil, which will inspire the future generations to reignite the American dream and will become a truly magnificent nation once more. And Obama will descend from the heavens and human suffering will cease to exist as we know it when, like a trained general AI, we task students with solving world peace and they simply must must, else they'll fail AP rebuilding civilization, for another flourishing of human advancement will occur after the Corona Dark Ages comes to an end, fueled by the holy words asynchronous, hybrid, and, of course, Zoom. Maybe that image is just a tad idealistic, but shouldn't we try and take steps towards a perfect education system? Corona has given us as a society so much momentum for change. Really, if we remotely followed the precautions given to us, we would have had a month-long opportunity to reset and reassess. It would have been the perfect experiment to go online for a while before exams just to get a taste of online school, wouldn't it? That notion is a bit utopian considering how entitled Americans have proven themselves to be, but actually the current situation might be better for education on the whole than what I just theorized. Sure, early Earlier in the year, students could have compared online and physical learning for the same course, disregarding the thrown together nature of the online portion, but as the saying goes, there are three things guaranteed in life. Death, taxes, and ignorance of the younger generation's voices. If we were in the one in a million timeline where Corona just fizzled out in June, I find it hard to imagine we'd even see real change. But now we're operating in a bit of a gray area. We went for the most part completely online back in March because we had a physical foundation laid, and in the absence of such a foundation, in the absence of hope that this supposed mild flu would be a passing fling, it now seems the predominant learning format of the 2020 to 21 school year is a hybrid system. Students usually coming to class less than half of how often they normally would, for the most part at least. I used to champion online learning as the way of the future. I'm one of those students that would rather just blow through a week's worth of work on Monday and huff myself into the next week. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I love this. Anyway, I already had some experience online before this pandemic because I completed sixth grade entirely virtually, and it was extremely liberating. I'd finish my work around 12 and then play Minecraft or go outside to play alone. So when March rolled around this year, I would also finish my work around 12 and then play Minecraft or go outside to play alone. On this channel, I've implied that there's no point to high school unless you enjoyed it and that we all ought to find our own escapes from school's monotony. So I thought online learning would give everyone, including myself, this opportunity to just take in a bit more enjoyment and free time. While we watch the world burn before the year, along with the world, comes to an inevitable and complete end on December 31st. But for me, mostly online college has proven quite the opposite about hybrid education. It's an interesting case study, really, comparing the relative calm I enjoy five months ago to my current university, and it gives me a unique perspective and a few nice examples in addressing the question that we never really got to fully ponder. Are we ready for this? Are we as a society able to handle the switch to, say, totally remote education? Are we ready for online learning in general? Let's start with the most obvious and practical question. If we are to go entirely or even partially online, what's to be said about accessibility? 10% of Americans, that's one in 10, don't use the internet at all. When a router and personal computer become requirements alongside a meningitis vaccine, what's truly to become of the so-called great equalizer? When bandwidth is a commodity that disadvantaged parents and even poorly funded schools can't afford, what can they even do, especially in today's unique circumstances? Nowadays, some might say online learning could be considered more of a detriment to public education, but, well, corona necessitates it. And if we were to progress to fulfill the vision of utopia I described a minute ago, it would only accentuate this poverty, this divide. You could say areas that don't have widespread internet access don't really have public education systems in place either, but this is just an oversimplified excuse for transitioning to online learning, covering up the fact that these poorly funded schools were already catching snags, but are now completely tripped up, even though on paper, half-full laptop carts and partially modernized libraries are excusing any further. 
further scrutiny. But I will grant that yes, that 10% statistic is grossly misrepresenting the younger demographics by taking into account older generations, which really means that, considering the title question alone, we are pretty much ready for online learning in a practical sense, though I suppose I just wanted to mention on a socioeconomic level, not so much. But to oppose that point, we probably never will be. I see people toting around online education as doing quite the opposite, making learning more accessible and closing social inequity, but I'd say this really only applies to free online courses and less to tuition-hungry institutions, both of which you need to be out of the bottommost ruts of society to even be able to get access to in the first place. So to clarify, on an infrastructure level, we're passing, maybe not great, but passing certainly when it comes to virtually connecting students and teachers. You might also say this entire question about accessibility becomes a moot point when you realize if I didn't come to this conclusion, we wouldn't be doing online learning at all right now. And to that I say, moving on, I've done a lot of research for videos in the past, but I've never really read anything that made me want to check the author's name. So it was much to my surprise when I found myself loving a certain comparison in Peter Herman's Online Learning is Not the Future. You might have heard the anecdote that some ancient Greek philosophers denounced writing and much preferred face-to-face -face teaching. When I first heard that, I probably had the same reaction as many of you. Lol, isn't it ironic that that means we don't have those writings? How stupid of them! But Herman compares their grievances to modern pandemic learning in a succinct way. Quote, if you ask an inanimate object like a piece of writing or a painting a question, Socrates says, you don't get an answer. Instead, it goes on telling you just the same thing forever. Ask a video lecture a question or a podcast and you will not get a response. You can't engage it in dialogue. And as Socrates says, it's in dialogue, teasing out of ideas, challenging them, argument and counterargument that genuine education happens. Tuning out your teacher remaining disengaged or even being scared that you're going to ask a dumb question were all, to no one's surprise, detrimental to learning in a physical classroom, but we're forced into these pitfalls now. No amount of being diligent with where you pay your attention is going to rectify the fact that you can't ask your teacher anything in pre-recorded lectures. It goes the other way too. Your teacher can't gauge if everyone's following the material or not. Online learning is robbing us of both class time and the quality of that class time if we get any, meaning that it's either jam-packed with too many catch-up questions or made to function as an optional study hall, or as many of you have been yelling at your screens, replaced with Zoom. Zoom actually seems to be at the very least a partial solution to this problem, but speaking of being disengaged with lectures and playing with your phone under your desk in class, Zoom provides a nice segue into the next issue. What device are you watching this video on? If you're on a computer, back up from the screen for a moment. Zoom out. This one machine is your portal to life beyond your house, to countless other YouTube channels the algorithm pushes in front of you while constantly reinventing itself to maximize the time you spend staring at a screen, and perhaps you have a few other tabs open, a few other applications open, maybe you're a gamer or a busybody listening to this in the background, maybe you're on mobile passing the evenings on YouTube or on your computer again, you're watching this while your schoolwork beckons to you in a docs tab adjacent to my distracting voice, but alas, in all of these cases there's still much more to do about nothing before you'd even consider finishing your assignments. I'm sure you get the point. I'd consider myself a self-motivated student that used sixth grade and March to refine my work ethic to what was, at one point, and at times, almost effortless diligence for the most part, yet I find myself now surrounded with distractions. Throughout my first real week of school, I was constantly tabbing back to a Discord server that you should totally join, by the way, or wasting my mornings on other things. You know, we've been thrust into online school at a terrible time for our generation. Most of us grew up with these devices acting as almost an extension of oneself like an extra limb. How should we be expected to retain everything from a two-hour Zoom call if there are absolutely no short-term repercussions for muting it and playing Minecraft the whole time? Or getting off the Zoom call and deciding, hey, the worksheet is due Friday at midnight, I'll just play Minecraft until 10 o'clock that night when the fresh lesson material has gone completely stale and almost rotten. It's even worse for college. My old high school's rotating days for groups of kids to come into a physical classroom, but college courses are usually meant to meet one to at most three times a week. But now it's even less frequent. Are you the type to get all your work done as soon as you can? Well, by the time your next slew of assignments comes around, you've forgotten everything. But for the most part, it's not even that students aren't doing their work at all in the swaths of free time they find in their hands, it's that they procrastinate doing their assignments, rush them, cram before quizzes and tests, and tune out lectures to play something like Minecraft. Really, online learning has only drastically accentuated the existing problems we have with an institution already known for teaching kids how to game the education system than how to actually learn and digest new material, how to lose respect for authority when that authority is at the mercy of you clicking the Zoom link or not, and probably most of all how to tune out your teachers. 
I've seen people complain that they can't focus and chalk it up to personal shortcomings, but it's really like blaming yourself for being left alone in a room full of cake. Your instructor communicating with you from the other room, not even really explicitly telling you not to eat any, with no threat of reprimand. So why shouldn't you stuff yourself? We all would, for the most part. But let's go back to the hypothetical that you do want to actually get your work done. You want to manage things in a neat, organized way. You want to find your assignments in one streamlined, modern application. You at least want to be notified when your virtual Zoom meeting is happening. Well, you better be an inhuman data crawler willing to scan and sift through every conceivable directory on every mildly education-related website, or you might fall behind. At least that's what it feels like. I promised I'd use my personal experiences as an example, so I'll make good on that here. My high school teachers have had received training for a while before the pandemic, administration urging them to use the Google suite of online learning products, notably Google Classroom. Only a few actually ended up employing these methods pre-corona, but still, looking back on March through May from where I am now, that was a dream to open up the classroom dashboard and have the peace of mind when the website lays before you all of your classes in one place and tells you nothing is due. But I've spoken to other people and it seems like my high school is not in the majority. Most people instead relate when I list every site I log into at least once a week for college. Oh boy. <gasps> ELC for course content and sparse announcements, Piazza for discussion, some assignments and vital announcements, Top Hat for homework, Slate for interacting with anyone else in the class, Outlook for crucial university emails, Athena for managing everything course and university related, Pearson for textbooks, Webwork for homework, which by the way, I have to use the university VPN to access in case the Russians want to do my work for me, I guess. And how could I forget about Zoom? Oh, I know why, because other people use Canvas, Microsoft Teams or Google Meet. Oh, and every time I log into the university specific websites, I have to use this stupid two-factor authentication app, Duolingo. Sorry, Duo Push. Oh, Oh, and speaking of apps, if you didn't catch the group me links at the beginning of the year, you'll miss the ability to ask and see vital clarifications for your courses. I haven't spoken to another human being in person in a month, and I've never felt the peace of mind of finishing assignments because my brain has been trained to always subconsciously nag me. What if I miss a meeting or an assignment on a site I haven't checked in a while? In a while being a few days or a few hours or a few minutes, the youth isn't going through the coronavirus pandemic. It is and has always been going through an anxiety pandemic. And now we have to deal with this? Nope. No optimistic conclusion here. As a society, we were faced with two paths. Receive little to no education reform naturally, or allow corona to thrust us into a haphazardly thrown together, partially online education system. We chose, well, we couldn't even really choose the latter, and now we're dealing with the consequences. When you think about it, this question is pointless. Are we ready for online learning? The universe looks upon that question with absolute indifference. Aren't millions upon millions of college students being scammed out of their exorbitant tuitions to barely make it through these classes by cramming or cheating through each online quiz? Aren't you fed up with these unending platforms? Don't you feel bitter at the world for stacking the odds against you, unloading another high caliber round into you from 2020's seemingly unending bandolier? I'm kidding about the lack of a nauseatingly cheesy conclusion. After all, it's only natural to feel the ways I described. Frustrated and justifiably indignant. But it's the separation of your frustrations and tensions that allow you to do more than sit on your couch and curse the world for thrusting us into online learning when you probably weren't ready for it. I've done that. I'm completely alone and there have been many times I've gotten up from my computer entirely overwhelmed and inundated with stress, posing a question to no one in particular, why couldn't things have panned out to be any better? But those are fruitless, spiteful questions that hold you back from getting things under control. It's easy to throw your hands in the air and cry victimization to the system, but that will never lead to any real change or progress or growth. If I gave up online school and never had to overcome the challenge of finding self-motivation through discipline or passion, but mostly discipline, I would have never have had the work ethic to finish this video, or any videos I've made for that matter. So let us overcome these obstacles. Let us not grumble about the fact that Corona struck at the wrong time and our older professors had to make do with what little IT knowledge they have. It would be a shame to complain and refrain from change. Let's instead emerge from this as a hardened, mature generation, fully cognizant of the pitfalls of online learning and what we as a society and as individuals need to do to move forward. Maybe if we can prove our diligence, Obama will finally descend from the heavens like the legends foretold. But in the meantime, we can have our ideals and visions of utopia, again on the macro and micro scale, but they are meaningless unless we work towards them.
No, most of us students and teachers aren't ready for online learning, but we are ready to move forward, to plunge ourselves into the future in spite of the absurdity of this world. Thanks for watching. I always found it disgusting to add calls to action within genuine excitement at the end of videos, so just instead share the video, I guess. If you liked it, that is. I don't think there's really anything else that could save these types of videos that the algorithm tends not to like. As far as this channel goes, I warned that I might not be able to upload as frequently, and unsurprisingly, I was quite right. As it turns out, living entirely on your own and skipping the easy college courses with your AP credits tends not to leave you with much energy to work on passion projects. Who'da thunk it? I've already plugged the Discord multiple times throughout this video, so it leaves me free to say this. This has been one of the most special, surreal, amazing experiences ever. Not just the Discord, but everything. To everyone who never would have met me had I not ranted about dinosaurs for 15 minutes a few months ago, thank you. I really mean it.